you all. Uh, I'm here to talk about Snowlipids, a species whose pictures and photographs are becoming a commonplace, uh, but one, the one, a species which we know very little about. From the President of uh, the Kyrgyz Republic to the Vice President of Afghanistan, from deputy speakers and ministers from 12 countries to the Secretary General of United Nations, from heads of international organizations such as UNED, WWF, Snowlipper Trust, GTI Council, and so on, to celebrities cumulatively engaging with more than 50 million people across the world. Last August saw one of the biggest ever aggregation of some of the most influential people, including business leaders, coming together under one roof for snow leopard conservation. This happened in Bishkek, Kyrgyz Republic. Five years ago, if you would have asked me that this is the level of support snow leopards would ever receive, I would have laughed and rolled my eyes in disbelief. Thanks to the leadership of champions such as the President of the Kyrgyz Republic, the Prime Minister of Nepal, today the Global Snow Leopard and, e uh, and Ecosystem Protection Program is one of the world's most powerful alliances of governments, donor agencies, partner organizations, field researchers, and conservationists working towards one cause, that of conserving snow leopards and their ecosystems. What's remarkable is that the 12 snow leopard range countries represent a spectrum of some of the world's most rapidly developing economies to some which are in the early stages of development ladder. Uh, they represent countries that are densely populated, yet some of them are not the best of neighbors. One of the main reasons why we do not put any borders on this map is because we are dealing with, we are talking about countries which have uh, not so very friendly neighbor, uh, neighborhood relationship with each other, be it India and Pakistan, China, Mongolia, and so on. Now, what is this snow leopard uh, that's bringing people beyond borders together? It might be a redundant question, uh, but just like the tiger, snow leopards are deep embedded in the symbols, cultures, traditions, and folklore of people living in the mountains of Central and Southeast Asia and South Asia. Biologically speaking, the species is no less than a legend. For those of you who may have seen Kung Fu Panda, you recollect the supervillain Tai Lung, who had these amazing promises. Trust me, evolution has equipped the snow leopard with no less powers than what DreamWorks Studios equipped Thailand with. Be it surviving in the rarefied air, climbing vertical walls, uh, uh, surveying hundreds of uh, uh, thousands of square kilometers, these cats do it effortlessly, naturally. These snow leopards are indeed masters of the mountain ecosystem. Add to this, one master skill, uh, is, which is that of melting in the background, I've been, sh I've been sharing this image for the last six, seven years, and I must say that not a single person till date has been able to find a snow leopard in it. Uh, I would have loved to give you some time, but since we are running short of time, I'll just go ahead and show you where the snow leopard is. But the challenge will be to see it after the image is gone. So that's where the snow leopard is. Now you can see it. And the moment you zoom out, it just melts in the background. This is why people also call snow leopard the ghost of the mound. They hear it, they see the kills made by it, they see its footprints in the snow, but they never see it, right? Because, just because of this. And there have been instances I knew there was a snow leopard right in front of me, and I just couldn't see it because it was nicely melting in the background. We've lost many of our beautiful natural treasures to human greed. It is because people need water. Snow leopards represent ecosystems that are often called the third pole. These mountains, and I'm not exaggerating here, provide water to billions of humans living downstream in some of the world's most populous countries. People also need clean air, medicinal plants, biomass, fodder, pest control, and tens of other provisional, cultural, and regulating services whose value, if put together, exceeds people's per capita income by more than 100 times. It is because extreme events are on the rise and they are hurting our economies. Be it more frequent Zud, which is an extreme winter event in Mongolia, or the flash floods in Chitral in Pakistan. Not just local communities, but the organizations and government agencies are also suffering severe resource drain 
uh, in managing these frequently occurring disasters. Because even though people sharing their habitat with snow leopards and the, mount uh, and, and the mountain uh, species need development, development does not have to be destructive. They care because these mountains have an ambassador spread over 2 million square kilometers. <coughs> snow leopards move between international borders without the need of any passport or visa. We have some state-of-the-art data coming in from Nepal, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Mongolia, um, where we found that snow leopards were crossing borders periodically. And of course, as long as you don't fence the borders, they don't need, they don't care about borders, human-made borders, and they don't need visas. Hence, we call them the ambassadors of these mountains. Uh, just imagine a snow leopard can have a range which is equal to the size of Delhi and Sia, which is 1,300, 1,400 square kilometers. That's the range one snow leopard can potentially have. And of course, apart from being the true ambassadors of the mountain ecosystems, snow leopards are also the guardians of, uh, of uh, guardians and thermometers of the health of these ecosystems. Uh, poorly planned infrastructure and so on. There are some more emerging threats which are even worse to look at, such as unregulated tourism. While tourism can generate valuable income, uh, if left unregulated, it can lead to disastrous consequences, not just for the wildlife getting harassed like here, as you can see a snow leopard being chased by a snowmobile, but also for two other tourists who would not like to see this uh, experience something as uh, pathetic as this. Even feral dogs uh, and the are all out, out there, and uh, thanks to the garbage that we are generating. What's remarkable here is that some of these threats that I just mentioned were not even listed in the top threats in 2004. Uh, if you flip the pages of the Snow Leopard Survival Strategy in 2014, you realize that the whole list of thre threats has uh, completely changed. New threats are now added, and that's what highlights the, but the real effect of how uh, uh, of, of will be that of how we, humans, respond to these changes. Some preliminary studies are already showing uh, 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 catastrophic changes in the climatic patterns in the mountains. It's already causing havoc in nomadic pastoral communities, leading to more conflict because communities are having to move closer uh, into those areas where they were, were, were they never going close to. And that's, that's going to add to the multifaceted list of threats snow leopards are facing today. Quickly changing gears, do we really know what snow leopards need? Until recently, we didn't even know their diet. And if you see this little video, you realize that uh, researchers uh, who used to collect snow leopard pieces, uh, they used to collect them, analyze them under the microscope, and say, identify which species the snow leopard is eating. But look at this picture. We have a snow leopard which has just defecated, there is fresh scat. Three days later, by when you will still call, call it a fresh scat, a fox comes and defecates right on top. Now, unless you were really identifying these through some other method methodology, you would be collecting a scat and claiming it to be snow leopard diet, but actually you're, you're estimating fox diet. Thankfully, technology evolved in parallel uh, to facilitate identification of species uh, from these pieces using genetics. So now we know better. For years, researchers estimated their own home range in guise of estimating snow leopard home range uh, when they tried to track snow leopards using radio transmitters. Snow leopards were technically uh, going out in and out of their reach of their transmitters, but, so, but researchers believed that this was uh, a technical error. In reality, they were estimating their own home ranges. As ironical as it may sound, we still do not know how many snow leopards are there in the wild. The best estimates about snow leopard populations are, are nothing but guesstimates. Less than 2% of the snow leopard range has ever been sampled systematically, and that too is biased towards the best habitat. So we don't even know how many snow leopards are there out in the wild. The best means to study snow leopards would have been that of walking with them in the mountains, taking them off on a leash, but that would have cost us many researchers limbs and possibly even lives. So we Artificial intelligence is helping us identify snow leopards from hundreds of thousands of camera traps, uh, camera trap images that are getting generated. State-of-the-art collars uh, are now letting us know about their natural history and ecology 
like never before. Just from one site in Mongolia where you see this data coming in from, we have 24 smaller birds scholars, more than 35,000 locations in the last nine years. And that's telling us almost to the extent what a snow leopard is eating, when is it resting, when is it hunting, uh, when is it dying, and a lot more. We're exploring the use uh, of drones to survey mountains and mountain ungulates. And we are running sophisticated analysis on massive data sets through supercomputer facilities, which are becoming more and more available to us now. But is that enough? To be honest, technology alone cannot save snow leopards. To explore that, I'll tell you a very short story before I finish. In the, in the 1990s, uh, snow leopard had walked into a village uh, in Kibber, which is in a city landscape in Himachal Pradesh. Uh, it killed several livestock. It was eventually trapped and killed by the locals. Being a Buddhist community, they respect all their forms. They buried the carcass in a, nearby village, uh, in a nearby valley, but the hatred towards the small leopard was such that as a ritual, the village folk would go and beat the grave of the snow leopard for years to come with a stick. Cut to 2016, just 20 years later. Another snow leopard walked into the same village. This one was old and had seemingly lived her life. The villagers did not kill her, but instead offered her some meat. As destiny would have it, the snow leopard eventually died. This time again, the snow leopard was formally buried, but she was buried with a Buddhist sacred, called, uh, sacred cloth called Ashi Thata. What happened? What was it that happened in these 20 years that changed people's hearts so much? The answer lies in partnership. A conservation organization, in this case, the Snow Leopard Trust, had built partnership with the local communities to not only mitigate the situation by developing an innovative livestock insurance program, but to also reduce the losses by helping revive some of the traditional birding practices. This is just one of the many wonderful, uh, uh, one of the many wonderful examples that we have of the good, great work organizations such as WWF, SLCIT, uh, SLT, and others are doing. As we all know, the devil lies in the detail. Uh, the key to a successful conservation program is uh, is in ensuring that we don't do a copy paste. We don't take a successful program from one area, paste it into another area, and assume that it will work. Uh, the key is in working closely with the local communities, using the collective wisdom of the of, of the people uh, to find mutually acceptable solutions, which are good for the wildlife as well as for the local communities. On that note.